Hey, what's up? I just wanted to make a quick video on my Whispering Ice Trickster League starter, explain how it's been going, what lessons I've learned, where I'm going from here, and also just wanted to explain why there has been no content for a while. Basically, my PC died, so I had to replace a bunch of parts, and I just barely got the new PC up and running at the very last minute before the league start. And I was just barely able to uh, to squeeze into the league start and start alongside everyone else. But then on the first day of the league, I was having the issue of crashing all the time. Basically, every time I entered town because of the MTX crash from day one of the league where they introduced a new MTX and it was causing people to crash, I was affected by that. And so I decided to not even really bother with speedrunning the campaign because there was no point. I was crashing all the time anyway. Uh, so I was just doing the league mechanic in every zone, ended up taking about nine, nine and a half hours to finish the campaign, I think, which normally I'm done in about four and a half, five, somewhere in that range. And obviously you can't start leveling as a Whispering Ice build because it's level 30, oh, that's gems in it. I think it's a level 33 item. So I was leveling as Spark until then, and that was fine. I tested a bunch of different leveling skills for Shadow Spellcaster early game, and Spark just came out on top. So that was basically just day one. Day one, I got through the campaign, got into maps, got into like yellow maps. Like I said, it took a long time to finish the campaign because of all the crashing, but it's been pretty smooth sailing after that. I've had some more crashes, but it feels like they're fixing the crashes every single day. So just less and less crashes as it goes on, and now it feels pretty stable, like I'm not really crashing anymore. So anyway, that's why there was no content, and that was how the first day of the league went for me. So I want to talk about actual progress, how this build felt, um, how it went, and all that. So day two of the league, I have a POB for this. I actually have a POB for day two, three, five, and seven. It is currently day seven of the league when I'm recording this. I haven't really played any yet on day seven, but it is currently day seven of the league. So anyway, on day two, this is what the tree looked like. Um, the items were like complete garbage. This character was maybe worth 50 chaos. And this was enough to take down the first two Eldritch bosses, the Infinite Hunger and the Black Star, very, very easily, very comfortably. This might have been the most powerful League starter I've ever played. Uh, maybe, possibly even more powerful than the Poison SRS, which I played last season, which was also my most powerful League starter that I ever played. The really big difference is that to transition into Poison SRS was expensive, and this build, on the other hand, cost nothing to get up and running. I just had to buy the staff, which I bought two of them uh, for four chaos each, I think, on day one. Just like the first few chaos that I picked up off the ground, I just set those aside, had a live search going for the Whispering Ice, picked it up real cheap, and I've been using those ever since. And then once I had enough jewelers to get them six socketed, I did, because you don't need to link the Whispering Ice. The skill that you use is called Ice Storm, it comes from the item, so any gem that's socketed into the Whispering Ice will support that skill. Uh, the reason I bought two of them, I'm, I want to explain this now, is to make this build feel really good, you actually want to set up a weapon swap. You're going to have one for self-casting Ice Storm, just, you know, you stand still and cast it. And the other one is a Cyclone cast while channeling setup. And for this one, the cast while channeling and Cyclone do have to be linked. And ideally, you want them linked with Inspiration, too, because that will make the Cyclone cost less mana. So that's basically it for the weapon swap. Just use the Cyclone cast while channeling one while mapping. And for tough bosses, just switch to the self-cast, because it's a lot higher damage to use the self-cast version. Now back into the progress on day three. So this is the end of the first weekend. I had Exarch and Eater both down, and the entire Atlas clear, other than a few unique maps. And again, very, very easily. So that's it for day two. Moving into day three, which is, you know, the end of the first weekend, I got Exarch and Eater down, Deathless, entire Atlas is clear, except for a few unique maps. And the gear was barely different from the day two gear. Like if I switch back to the day two gear set, there's like two or three items that are even different here. Like I switched this Bated Breath out for uh, this belt, which is fine. Uh, I was still using a Carnage Heart on day three. Like these are really just nothing gear and this was able to take down the first two void stones very very easily very quickly and then just a couple days later gear is a bit better here i've got a cluster jewel set up uh so this is day five i cleared all four void stones so uber elder and maven both down 
atlas completely clear every every atlas point unlocked 132 atlas points unlocked every map favorite slot unlocked everything is done at this point day five of the league honestly if i could have played all day on day four this probably could have been done on day four but this game isn't my job i do have a full-time job so that wasn't really something i could have done and even on day five this character is only worth i would say about 12 divine total but eight of that is just this watcher's eye this watcher's eye was eight divine and totally unnecessary. It's a decent damage boost because of the damage penetrates cold resistance. The real nice thing from this Watcher's Eye is the gain 25 energy shield per enemy hit while affected by discipline. It makes you basically immortal to being shotgunned, especially if you use a cast while damage taken ball lightning setup, which I am, I'll get into that later. And now day seven, this is where we are now. The big upgrades here are I have another cluster jewel. Uh, this cluster jewel would have cost about four divine to buy, I think, and this one would have been about two, but I ended up crafting both of them. This one here cost, I think, 2,000 harvest juice to craft, and this one I crafted with alterations and regals. It was like maybe 50 to 100 alterations and like four regals, and I got th this one I got pretty lucky on. Um, speaking of luck, uh, my biggest lucky drop so far this league is my quest Exarch dropped crystallized omniscience. That is the first time. I think I've ever had a big drop from the quest version of those bosses. That was really nice. It sold for 11 divine on day three of the league, I think that was. But like I said, this character wasn't really worth any currency. The only thing I really put any currency into is this Watcher's Eye. And that crystallized omniscience drop is basically what let me buy this Watcher's Eye. And then the other big upgrades, which were also funded partially by that, were these two split personalities. These are really big upgrades. Um, the reason this tree looks so weird, I guess I should have explained this earlier, the reason this tree looks so weird is that split personality gets stronger the further you travel on the tree. So if you take like this tree that looks really unoptimal, but actually it is optimized for split personality, you're just taking as many travel points as possible all the way around the tree, all the way around up to this cluster jewel. And then these two split personalities, like this one, Actually, I'll show this in game because it looks better in game. In game, you can even see the path of split personality. You can see that these highlighted lines here are showing the path that it takes to get to the split personality jewels. Anything that's not highlighted like this is not counted. And then if I hover over them up here, you see this one is giving me plus 76 intelligence and energy shield. And this one is giving me plus 81 intelligence and energy shield. And this is an intelligence stacking build because the skill Ice Storm from Whispering Ice scales with intelligence. It scales in, I think, three different ways with intelligence, maybe four, actually. It scales duration by intelligence, it scales flat damage by intelligence, and I think it scales percent increased by intelligence. So very, very strong to stack intelligence on this build. I'm up to about 1,700 currently. I was only at about 1400 I think when I took down the last of the four void zones and when I did the first two I think I was only at like 1100 intelligence and it was still very strong for that stage of the league oh and I almost forgot to mention these two split personalities these I waited for them to come down in price because early in the league they were about eight divine each and that was just too expensive so I got these after I did my four void stones and they were one was three divine and the other one was 3.5 so now I'll just explain some more of the, the gear choices and gem choices. Uh, so Chevron's Revelation, this is just a ton of intelligence and energy shield if you put it in your left slot. There isn't really anything better than this other than just an insanely good crafted, probably synthesized ring. Anathema in the right ring slot. Um, this makes your curse limit equal to your power charges and this build does uh, take every power charge on the tree that's available. So it's six power charges, which means you have a curse limit of six. Don't quite use all six because there just aren't really six curses that are useful to the build. Other than that, the Whispering Ice, obviously two of them I already mentioned. You want one for a castle channeling setup. You want them rolled as well as possible. It's pretty easy to get a good roll on Whispering Ice. Just buy a good roll. It doesn't matter how many sockets are on it. Buy a good roll cheap. It doesn't matter if it's linked. And then just spend the 350 jeweler orbs to six socket it. Uh, for boots, just use the Stampede because it makes Cyclone not slow you down. 
and it also enables you to use this keystone up here from this cluster jewel this cluster jewel's natural affinity it gives you nature's patience this puts grasping vines on you while stationary which make you take less damage and deal double damage sometimes so these grasping vines that are on my character here that's what that is from if i move they start breaking but they make you really tanky and they let you kind of just sit here and just cast you don't really have to move against most things you will be able to tank most things especially when you combine it with things like Heartstopper, or just having a ton of evasion. And the way we get this much evasion is from this evasion and energy shield mastery, which makes your dexterity not provide evasion rating, but instead your intelligence does. And because we have so much intelligence, it is a lot of evasion. Gloves and body armor are just Eldritch crafted items. These don't even have the right mods on them. Actually, the body armor has the right mods, but these could stand to be higher tier mods. The gloves, that overwhelm, fizz reduction is doing nothing. There is an intelligence stacking Eldritch mod. I just don't have it yet. I just haven't rolled enough currency on it to get that yet. The belt is a synthesized belt with 10% increased intelligence. I bought this for 15 chaos, and I was pretty surprised because I thought I was getting a steal. Like, this person maybe doesn't realize how valuable this is, but it was another Whispering Ice Trickster who sold this to me. So they knew how valuable it was. They sold me the base. I crafted on it. They sold me a scoured base. And then I just crafted on it with essences. So this belt is pretty good as it is. It could be a bit better. You can you can get a better synthesized base that has a higher percent increased intelligence. But this was good enough for what I needed it for. Body armor, similar story. I bought a six link sadist garb and just essence crafted it. Then threw some eldritch currency at it. The real hard part about this armor was coloring it. Coloring this armor, I was kind of running this as a five link for a while, like up to the point where I finished my four void stones. Uh, because once I here was green, I just had, I think, temporal chains in there because I just didn't really have anything better to put in there. And recoloring this took over a thousand chromes when it should have been like 200 maybe. Uh, I plugged it into the Verici calculator and it said oh, about 184 chromes to recolor this to what I want. So I was like, okay, I'll just do that. And just spamming chromes was the optimal way to go. It just had a high standard deviation. And that means that you can get very unlucky. And I did, I spent over a thousand on it. And then I decided, you know what? Let me just pick the option that costs more on average, which was one red and one blue. This should have cost me more, but it had a much lower standard deviation. So it's like, well, I can't really get as unlucky on this, but I ended up getting super lucky on this and only spent 45 chromes. So I feel like I should have just done this in the first place. But anyway, the coloring is done now. The use for the six link is actually our curse setup. It's a uh, cast one damage taken, ball lightning of orbiting. This is a new skill. If I take this off and then ball lightning of orbiting, this works like spectral helix where it spins around your character. And it's really, really useful for kind of hitting everything around your character. And since I'm using this with a hex touch setup, that means that it's really good for cursing everything around me. And in maps, I just use this with a level one cast one damage taken. The ball lightning is also level one so that it will trigger. The curses are all level 20, so they cannot be triggered by cast one damage taken. It has to trigger the ball lightning, which will apply the curses through hex touch. And the only three really good hexes to use here are Elemental Weakness, Frostbite, and Punishment. Like I said, I was swapping out one of these for Temporal Chains when I didn't have the right colors. And then if you really want to, for bosses, you could actually just take out this Cast and Damage Taken setup and just manually cast the Ball Lightning whenever you need to reapply Curses. It hasn't been necessary for me, so I haven't bothered with that, but that is an option. If you were going to do that, you would probably not use Ball Lightning of Orbiting. You would just use regular Ball Lightning or even like Eye of Winter, something that easily hits the whole screen to make sure it applies those curses. Uh, there is another curse on the build. It's applied through Arcanist Brand and Assassin's Mark. That is the next best curse on the build. You can only have one mark, so it's the only one here. This Arcanist Brand is also casting Frost Shield, which just is a bit of defense and some more damage on the build. And then Bone Chill. Bone Chill actually works with Frost Shield. It it applies the increased damage taken to any enemy that's standing in the frost shield area. This used to be done with Vortex, but Vortex is no longer an instant cast skill. You can put Vortex on Arcanist Brand for Bone Chill, 
But to do that and also have Frost Shield and Assassin's Mark would need a five link. So I can't really do that. So I've settled for having Bone Chill attached to Frost Shield. This is a little bit less reliable than Vortex, but Vortex was never really that reliable either, especially on a caster build like this where you're not always standing beside them because it used to be you would put Vortex on left click and then the things that are right beside you would get bone chilled. And I was using Vortex earlier in the Arcanist brand setup, but I've just decided that this kind of works better. Another option is Frostblink, actually also has chilled ground, also works with bone chill. The reason I'm not using Frostblink for this is because remember those grasping vines I explained earlier where they make us take less damage and deal uh, double damage sometimes? If you Frostblink, they all go away instantly. You lose all of them. Uh, I still keep Frostblink on the build for moving around mapping, but for bossing, for hard encounters, you want to avoid Frostblinking actually, because you want to avoid losing these Grasping Vines. Sometimes you have to, but in general, you want to keep the Grasping Vines. So that's why I don't use Frostblink for Bone Chill. For Auras, just Hatred, Purity of Elements, Discipline. I was using an Enlighten here, but then I realized I don't even need it. So I decided to just use this socket for my Frostblink. This build does need purity of elements because of the amount of gear suffixes and passive points we have to spend on intelligence. It basically makes it impossible to cap resistances without it and also to, to cap ailment avoidance. And then for the last gem setup, this is actually one that I'm thinking of changing up. One is I'm using steel skin. I'm just using this on manual cast because bleed is one of the few things that can still deal big damage to me and I just don't have bleed immunity elsewhere. So this is... The guard skill I'm using currently. Uh, I tested this build out last league, kind of late in the league, just to see if it would be good as a league starter, and I decided, yeah, I'm going to league start with this. And back then, I was using uh, cast when damage taken, Immortal Call, which I think is overall better than Steel Skin, but Steel Skin is still pretty good and it gives the bleed immunity, so I'm sticking with this for now. And then the very last setup cast when damage taken, Ball Lightning, slower projectiles. This is strictly to combine with that Watcher's Eye, which gives energy shield on hit. The slower projectiles makes that ball lightning hit things more before it leaves you. Again, ball lightning of orbiting so that it stays near you for longer. And it just gives you a ton of energy shield back really, really quickly when you take damage and it triggers this. And it's only a level one cast when damage taken, so it triggers very, very frequently. However, because I already basically have this setup or a very similar setup with my cast when damage taken ball lightning, X touch setup. I don't think this is really necessary. So this is three sockets that I have open to just kind of play around with and I haven't really decided what I want to do with this yet. It's fine as it is, but I think there are better, less redundant uses for these three sockets. So that's basically it for passives and skills and gear. So the only other thing left to talk about really on the character setup is the charms. Uh, this is the new ascendancy that we get. I actually didn't start with charms. I started as a warlock. Let me bring up POB again. So I started down here as warlock and first I took this pacify skill. This is a curse that uh, lasts 10 seconds. For six seconds, it does nothing. And then for four seconds, the cursed enemy cannot deal any damage. It's pretty nice. The problem with it is just managing it. If you recast it too early, it does nothing. Uh, during those first six seconds, it does nothing. You also need to make sure that you recast it pretty much as soon as it falls off if you're in a long boss fight or you're just not using it optimally. So managing this is just kind of painful. And then I took Foul Pact. This just made it so that in those four seconds when enemies are pacified, they take increased damage. It is a pretty big damage increase. And actually come to think of it, that is not the first thing I took. The first thing I took is Blood Hunt. This grants level 20 Ravenous skill. This is a skill that consumes a corpse on the ground to give you a buff specifically against that monster type, whether humanoid or beast or eldritch, or I forget what else. And that buff makes them take increased damage from you and you take reduced damage from them. It's a big difference in damage. It's very useful. It won't affect everything in the map, but on boss fights, it's very, very, very good. Oh, and just one thing I wanted to point out that's really weird with Blood Hunt, and I'm going to show this in game. Actually, I just remembered that I can't show it in game because I am not Warlock anymore. But what I was going to show is that Shikari is considered humanoid. The giant scorpion monster is considered humanoid. On the other hand, all four Shaper Guardians, you know, those guys in big suits of armor who clearly have two legs and two arms, 
they are all considered beast. But the giant scorpion monster is humanoid. Just wanted to get that out there. I can't really show it off right now because I am not warlock anymore. I don't know if anyone else has pointed that out. I... yeah. Why is the giant scorpion monster considered humanoid? Okay, so after going off on that tangent, the other thing I wanted to touch on with Warlock is the problem with going Warlock as a CI build is you actually can't use all of the points. All three of these points are blood magic. You reserve all of your life, but you don't have any life. Your skills cost life, but you only have one life, so you just you can't use any of these as CI. You can use this, you can use these curses, and you can use this because it's just a buff to the curse. And then I thought, this Dark Effigy skill actually sounds pretty strong. It's like a totem, or like a like a voodoo pole that you summon, and when you take damage, it gets redirected to the totem, and when the totem takes damage, it gets redirected to you. And I was thinking, you know, that would be pretty good if you just kind of put it a little bit off screen, just kind of off to the side where nothing is going to really hit it, and then you just kind of manage your positioning. Sounds really strong. Problem is, it costs life. You can't use it if you're a CI build. So you actually can't use all of the Warlock points if you're CI. Once I realized that, I just made the immediate switch over to Primalist for charms, which are better anyway. The first point is just some extra inventory space, whatever, it's cool. And then the rest of these points are all charms, and these are all incredibly strong. You can get insane charms. This one has Culling Strike and some resistances. This one has chance to deal more area damage and some resistances, and this one has can't be stunned while leeching. This one I am using mainly for ultimatum to avoid stun locks. I do have a better overall charm here. This one has curse effect and some resistances. Curse effect is really strong on this build because it runs four curses, but because I'm focused on ultimatum, I am focusing more on not being able to be stunned. Speaking of resistances, like I said earlier, this build needs purity of elements to resistance cap. I am still just barely above fire resistance, and this is not enough to be capped against fire exposure, and that is why I'm running a ruby flask. And these flasks have all been set up with gain 3 charges when hit, and even with this high evasion rating, because I'm running things like ultimatum where you get shotgunned a lot, these are still being activated all the time, so they're basically always up. And I've also noticed that the ultimatum fire skulls actually do a lot of damage, especially in the later rounds of ultimatum. They feel like they are deadlier than the other elemental traps in ultimatum so again ruby flask is helping out there that's basically all there is to talk about the current state of the character the character is level 95 as far as upgrades going forward i should probably grab ghost reaver on the tree to double energy shield leech my next passive points besides that will probably go into this cluster jewel so there's three that would already get me to level 99 just those points um, and then i would get another jewel here other options are this energy shield leech wheel, not this one, this one. This energy shield leech wheel is pretty nice. Um, you also get another mastery here, which uh, gives you another stack of polymath from the trickster ascendancy. Uh, this wheel up here, Disciple of the Forbidden, is also quite good. I was using this earlier on when I didn't have points into cluster jewels. Uh, this crit wheel over here is also pretty good, but I would say not good enough to be competitive with the other options on the tree. Uh, one other sort of alternate option would be to path up here towards instinct for some suppression and then combine that with some charms that also have suppression on them. Could actually get up to a pretty decent amount of spell suppression on a build that otherwise has none. Other than that, my big upgrades remaining are gear. Like I said earlier, I still have to fix my Eldritch Implicits on my gloves especially. And then my armor... Mainly just higher tier implicits would be better. This could also be crafted to be better. All of my crafted gear could be better. This could have a better intelligence base. Both my helmet and my amulet could have percent increased intelligence rolls, but these were good enough that I just decided to settle on them until I was at least done my four void stones and atlas completion, which I am done now. Actually, the amulet, if it were a dual influenced shaper crusader, could have both percent increased intelligence and percent increased damage per intelligence. So that is, if I wanted to really optimize the build, then that is a big upgrade I could invest into. I'm already up to 1700 intelligence, which is pretty good for this kind of build. If you want to really, really optimize it, you can get up to like 2000, 2100, 
but that's when you're getting into very expensive gear and this is just my league starter and it was great at that i am going to optimize it a bit more maybe get it to level 100 and then work on a new character probably speaking of new characters i have two ideas for characters i want to try that i planned out before the league start when i was reading the patch notes one is divine ire totems I know lots of people saw the Divine Iron changes and went, wow, that is a lot more damage. So yeah, I'm checking that out too. And the other one is Glacial Cascade Ignite. This is something I had my eyes on for a while, and the Glacial Cascade buff just made me want to try it even more. So I am going to look at that as I build this league. Also, I'm considering just saving up for a Headhunter and making a build that uses that because because the new league mechanic seems great with Headhunter, and also I'm focusing on Ultimatum, which is also great with Headhunter. And I guess I should talk a bit about Ultimatum. It feels alright so far. I know some people have been complaining about it feeling not rewarding. I would say it's pretty consistently decently rewarding. It's not like it used to be back in Ultimatum League, where it was always well rewarding if you could clear it. Now it is just, it's consistently pretty good. I haven't had anything amazing yet, I haven't had any ultimatums that just don't pay me anything. It's always pretty consistent. I'm also running shrines on my atlas to make ultimatum easier, and then I'm just kind of supplementing that with uh, with essences and with searing exarch altars, and also running alva, just building temples and selling them. And that's it, that's my whole atlas tree basically. So that's basically all I wanted to talk about regarding the build, so I'm actually just going to run a quick map here because uh, it would be a shame to talk all it would be a shame to talk this much about the build and then not actually show the build off in action so like i said while mapping just kind of run this castle channeling setup um i have been doing the league mechanic in every map uh, i'm basically bouncing oh i have the boss this is kind of lucky okay so let's show this off because i get to show boss damage this is really unexpected Okay, so that kind of broke my train of thought. Um, so I've switched to the self-cast setup because this is a boss. Uh, it looks kind of boring because, you know, you're just kind of standing there <laughs> hitting the boss. Uh, this is the... this is this one, right? Yep. I guess I have to get up here. I didn't know you can't hit these from below. I guess I didn't run enough to not get frozen by the debuff. Well. Oh, something else I did want to mention, and this is a good demonstration of it, is I'm actually doing pretty good damage to him right now. Like, pretty solid damage. Um, the DPS calculations for Whispering Ice or Ice Storm in POB are obviously very wrong. POB currently thinks I have about... 5 million DPS, I think. Oh, this is going backwards now. So, this way? Nope. Uh, uh oh. Well, this is the problem, is I'm gonna kick it. Gonna get uh, kicked out of here. Uh, unless. Where are we going? Lead the way. I must have gone the wrong way because they're, they're just going the wrong way now. Yeah, the arena's over there. I think I have just failed this fight. I don't. Th I think if you try to go back through. Oh, it's a debuff. It's a. Dot. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> I didn't. I got kind of caught in the maze there while I was explaining. Anyway, let's forget that happened. Um, I actually have not been caught in the maze before like that and didn't know that's how it worked. Uh, I've always just made it through the maze really smoothly. Um, that is one issue with the build is that there is no regen, uh, no regen at all. There's just leech. Um, which means that if you get caught in a dot like that, it's it's just gonna kill you. Um, as an Arakali touch mob, so I'm gonna switch to the self guys, and you can see as soon as I switch, like everything goes down pretty quickly. I think that was even empowered too. Uh, again, switch for essence monster. Switch off of the uh, castle channeling setup just to make quick work of essence monsters. Um, unfortunately, this map didn't really get empowered. It didn't get as empowered as I would have wanted because I died to the boss. Um, that was just unfortunate pathing in the maze. Uh, but what I was talking about is that POB currently thinks I have about 
5 million boss DPS, which is very, very obviously wrong. Even this cast while channeling setup is obviously above 5 million DPS, and it will be more obvious when I get to the map boss here, and I can show what the actual damage is like. I got shotgunned really hard there. I don't know what the... Oh, it's a soul eater. And now it's gone. Uh, so one thing to note is that the map clear on this build, it's not fantastic because it is just a cast while channeling build. You don't move that fast. You use the Stampede, so you can't use Quicksilver Flask. But it's comfy, it's solid, it can clear everything as far as I know. Shrine up here. Impenetrable Shrines are really nice because now I have almost 14,000 DS. My bitrate is probably dying while I'm trying to... Uh, while I'm trying to record all these particle effects. Actually, is it bitrate when it's recording or is that only streaming? I don't actually know. Uh, oh, I didn't switch. I was trying to self-cast Ice Storm and hadn't actually weapon swapped, and that's why nothing was happening. Uh, so you can see these essence monsters, even with deafening essences, they died real quick. So this is obviously pretty solid DPS. Kind of sad I didn't get an ultimatum in this map. So, permanently froze a tier 16 boss, obviously higher than 5 million DPS, like obviously significantly higher. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with Ice Storm calculations in POB, but uh, it's obviously doing fantastic DPS. Anyway, that was a bit embarrassing dying to the boss like that, but uh, like I said, I didn't know that's how the maze works, and I felt like the one, the first wisp kind of led me in the wrong direction. Anyway, that's basically it for this video because I have talked about everything I can think of for this build so far. Um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know. And I am just going to keep farming. I'm enjoying the league a lot and uh, keep saving up for probably some up upgrades for this character and then maybe a headhunter or maybe just a, a gear set for a new character. I haven't really decided what I'm doing next. And then I'll roll up a new character. Probably Glacial Cascade Ignite will be my next character. And then I'll go from there. But this character has been fantastic. I probably won't make more videos on this character because I kind of just did it all at once. Normally I make sort of a progress report as I'm going, but I decided to just sort of do it all at once this time and kind of roll all of the early POBs into one. I don't know if this format is better or worse than what I used to do. But uh, this is just kind of what I had to do because of how time crunched I was at League Start. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.